In this video I'm going to show you how to create this magnifying glass image in Adobe Illustrator. You would use images like this for things like web graphics, maybe icons for programs, or even logos for businesses. So to get started, I'm going to pop into Illustrator, head up the top and make a new document. We'll call our new document, document magnifying glass, and we'll change the profile to a print profile. Make sure you've got one artboard and your size is A4. You can choose either portrait or landscape for your document. I'm going to go with landscape today, but I'm not fussed what you choose. The bleed should be a 3mm bleed. We'll click OK once we've got that. Okay, and you're ready to start. The first thing I want you to do is get your rulers up on your page. And you can get your rulers by pressing Ctrl R as the shortcut, or you can go up to your view menu, select rulers, and show rulers. What that does is brings up a ruler across the top of your page and also down the left hand side of your page. These rulers are really handy as guides and the way we use them is we go and pick up this top ruler by clicking and dragging it and dropping it on our page about a bit past a quarter of the way down, maybe about a third of the way down the page. Okay, And that's now movable as long as it's not locked. So if that's locked you need to right click on it and just release the guides. That way you can pick it up with your black arrow and just move it about. The next tool you want, oh, we're still going to stay on the ruler tool, sorry, we're going to grab this ruler here on the left hand side now and we're going to drag it onto the page. We want to drop it about halfway on the page. So about mm, the 150 millimeter mark, if you look at the top, that's where you want it to drop. That's about halfway across our page. I might even move this top ruler just down a little bit further to about the 70 millimeter mark. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're ready to start drawing our magnifying glass now. And to do that, we're going to start with the ellipse tool. So press the letter L to get that quickly. For your colors, you want no fill color and you want a black border or stroke. It needs to be just one point. And we're going to start drawing the glass of the magnifying glass. So if we look back at the example, we're going to draw these circles first of all. To do that, we're going to draw it out of the center point here where these lines intersect. So I'm going to go to that intersection. When my mouse cursor tells me there's an intersect going on there, we hold down Alt to draw out of there and hold Shift to get a perfect circle. And I'm going to draw the glass of the magnifying glass there. So about that size is good. We're going to do exactly the same again out of the center there. But we're going to make it a little bit bigger this time. Not too much bigger. Just a little bit like that. So we've got two circles drawn on the page. That's going to be the glass for our magnifying glass. After that, we're going to pop back to our toolbox and we're going to grab the rounded rectangle tool this time. While holding the Alt key, hover over this vertical ruler and down below those circles, we're going to click and drag and just create nothing too big, something like that. And I'm just going to use Shift and the up arrow just to nudge that up a bit. I don't want this bit very long. Okay. Once that's in position, we're going to draw another one straight out of that center line again. So hover down below it and press Alt and start drawing your next handle. Okay, this is slightly wider than the other one. Something around there is going to look pretty decent, I reckon. So now we just need to join these shapes together to make it look good. So go to your select menu and select all. I'll press Ctrl A, that highlights everything on your page. And we're going to grab the Shape Builder tool from our toolbox. I'll press Shift M for the shortcut. With the Shape Builder tool, first thing you want to do is join this glass and this bit of handle together. That way it's going to remove this handle. So all you do is click from the circle and drag onto the handle. And that gets rid of it and makes that all one big shape. And the next bit, I want this frame of the magnifying glass to be connected with that bottom bit as well as the handle. And you can see there's a lot of different shapes going on here. So a quick way to join those all together is while we've still got the shape builder tool selected, we hold down shift and just drag over the top of them. And that joins them all together. So now we've got one big image there for the magnifying glass frame and then we've got one for the glass. Okay, so what we're going to do now is pop back to our toolbox and grab the ellipse tool again. We're going to add a bit more to this magnifying glass to make it look a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is hover over the intersection again, 
hold down Alt and Shift and draw yourself a smaller circle like so, so that's the smaller circle so far and we're going to do that one more time this time we're going to start from the center hold Alt and Shift and it's going to be the second biggest circle so I want you to go out and drop it between the second biggest and the biggest circle okay, and that now becomes the second biggest circle Okay, using your mouse arrow keys I want you to nudge it to the right I might just move it off the page for a minute and what we need to do if we look back at the original is create this crescent shape just here so what I'm going to do is drag this circle back and look over the little one where they overlap we should have a bit of a crescent forming just in there that's what we want to keep but we want to get rid of this part over here so what we need to do now is just select the small circle with our selection tool and then hold shift and click on this circle that we've put off to the side so we've got both those circles, the small one and the circle off to the side and once they're both selected we're going to go back to the shape builder tool and we can actually use it to remove certain shapes if we look at my mouse cursor now it's got a little plus sign on the end of it but if I hold down the alt key it brings up a minus sign it means we can minus some shapes or get rid of some shapes so what we're going to do is start out here and just click and drag in to that little circle and when I let go of this you'll see that that crescent shape is the only thing that remains behind from those circles okay, so, so far it's looking pretty good it might be a little bit out of place there it's a little bit low so you can grab your selection tool from the toolbox and just nudge that up a bit a little bit better now. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go back to our toolbox and we're going to double click on the shape builder tool to bring up its tool options. Okay, what I'm going to get you to check is the box that says cursor swatch preview. So we're about to color this magnifying glass in. So now when I pick up this tool and press control A that highlights my whole shape here. I've got three little boxes that appear above my mouse cursor and that's basically showing me what is in my swatches panel over here at the moment I've got no fill color selected so that little box above my mouse cursor shows me I've got no fill color if I click on red and come back to my artboard here you'll see on the left of the red icon is black and on the right is yellow exactly the same as in my swatches black on the left yellow on the right if I choose pink you see I've got blue and red either side of it if I press my left and right arrow keys I can scroll through those color boxes so pick a color that you want to color in your magnifying glass I think for the sake of this tutorial dark blue is a safe bet and all you need to do now is just click on your magnifying glass and that's colored in I'm going to go to the next one just to the left which is the cyan color and just click inside the glass and finally I'm going to grab white as my color and color in the crescent shape. I'm going to grab my selection tool again now and what I want to do is get rid of all the borders on these shapes. I don't think the borders look too flash. If I press Control A again to highlight all of your shapes. Go up to the stroke option here and just say nope I do not want a stroke. And that just removes the stroke from our shape. So far this is looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing we might do is just hide these guides. I think they're getting in the way now, so you can just right click on them and hide the guides, or you can click on those guides and just press delete, and that will get rid of them as well. Yeah, so far, it's looking good. Next thing we want to do to this magnifying glass is rotate it. So we're going to have to select all again. Press Ctrl A. Go over to your toolbox and grab the rotate tool, or we'll press the letter R for the shortcut. And while you're holding Shift, I just want you to drag it to the left a little bit and just drop it into place at 45 degree angle okay so we're nearly done now we're just up to the last bit where we're going to put a rounded rectangle behind this magnifying glass and to do that we just go back to our shapes grab a rounded rectangle now I want you to choose that light blue as your fill color that's cyan and we want no border from here I'm just going to click up above the magnifying glass hold shift click and drag over the top of it. You can just nudge that around a little bit. Now you'll notice that it's covered up all our artwork so what you need to do is go over to your layers panel 
over here and expand layer 1. We can see this top path here is the blue background so let's drag that all the way to the bottom of our layers list. And now that that's behind everything else we can see the magnifying glass come back because it's on top of it. Last thing you can do if you want is just press Ctrl A to select all or go to select and choose all and you can right click on all this and group it together. That just makes it one big image. So you can move it around now. You can resize it. It's never going to lose its quality. Okay, so when you're done, make sure you save that up as an Illustrator file. That's an AI file. And good luck.